Welcome back. This is IGN Live at Comic-Con 2022. Our next guest really needs no introduction. Well, but I'll, you can leave it there. <laughs> I'll give him I, one. Just I don't mind a little introduction. <laughs> Somebody says, who's that? I want them to know. Everyone get ready to applaud for right. the one, the only, the legendary Mr. Shatner. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Shatner. It's, it's all lies. <laughs> My name's Scott, so you can call me Mr. Scott if you like. Oh, I'm, I'm familiar with that name. <laughs> so you have, uh, you're here to promote the definitive William Shatner documentary, which is going into production. What will, what will make it definitive? I was there. <laughs> um, well, it's because over the years, uh, people have wanted to do something about but it's an affected obituary. <laughs> and and I, I thought, yeah, I don't want him to do my obituary or her. And then along comes uh, Legion M with an award-winning uh, documentarian. And it seemed a good time uh, because my left foot hurt. And I thought maybe my right foot will start to hurt. And that's the beginning of the end of my... <laughs> So I better get a documentary about me in the can quickly. Mr. Shatner, let's lighten this up a little bit. Come on. <laughs> you're depressing Light, lighten me. Lighten up? Well, you're going to die. That is How's true. How's that? Yeah. I, I might. You might last well, longer in, than me. I don't in, know. In, yeah, my baby. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. If you die before I do, that's not fine. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> so how much of your life are we going to cover in the documentary? Are we getting the full story from... There's a, a raw footage of me emerging from the womb. <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> as I get, get into decrepit old age, okay. it spans the expanse. Right, and then we get I don't to know. The... This is going to be this uh, uh, Alex Philippe, Alexandre Philippe. Oh, <laughs> Philippe has uh, got great taste, and I'm relying on him. And so I'm relying on him to make a great documentary, and this being made by Legion M which is like an innovative company, which is asking people, saying to people, look, this is, uh, this is our company, and you can invest in our company. You can buy, in essence, shares in our company for a modicum amount of money. I think the minimum uh, bid is like $100, not bid, uh, um, uh, 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 sale. And for $100 or more, you buy a piece of this company. That funds, uh, uh, those funds are used to make films, and making this document, uh, Terry, and, and you, the audience, shares in it. Yeah. And it's like an innovative, I've never heard of it before, yeah. and, and the, the group of people that are heading it are so bright and, and, uh, and creative, they're not very well organized. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you come in. So I know in your autobiography, which I may or may not have read, um, there, there's a... Um, you may or may not have read? I definitely read it. It was, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, was, it was definitive. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a bit where you talk about, you know, post-Star Trek, the show, where you were in your camper van, kind of traveling the country, doing regional theater, and you were kind of, it was sort of lean years for you. Um, will, we, will you touch on those aspects? So, sort of lean year? I was broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be polite here, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to touch on, like, the less glamorous aspects? Sure. Well... The glamour, there's no glamour. It's glamour, the glamour is here, like, oh, look at the bright lights and the makeup. That's the glamour. Looking back on your Star Trek career, was there a high point? Was there a moment or an episode or a scene or anything like that that you, you just think was that Well, was well the high point was uh, we, uh, NBC bought the, the series. And the low point was we've been canceled. In between, it was terrific. Right, yeah. Do you ever regret killing off Captain Kirk? I didn't kill him off. Mm. I, when I had took my dying breath, uh, when the shot was made, I picked myself up, went over to the producer, who was the producer of the, of the, of the movies, uh, and I said, I've written a book where Captain Kirk comes back to life. Right. He said, no, we're not gonna do that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, studio politics, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a great series. You turned, you did a whole bunch of them, actually, yes, didn't you? Right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, we've gotten Captain Picard came back, Captain Janeway came back. Like, why can't we get, or can we get Jim Kirk back, your version of Kirk? Can he come back and do, do a show well, or do an I episode? I don't know how you explain I died. How yeah. do you explain that? Well, you know, the bridge. I'm dead, Jim. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it would make a lot of people happy, though, wouldn't it? Well, uh, the people who... Uh, uh, are inheritors of my estate, I suppose would. <laughs> yeah, oh, no doubt, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So you've actually been to outer space now. Since, I have been. Yeah, what was that like? You don't have enough time. <laughs> uh, just to tell you that the end result was nothing like I expected. And, and it was really, it ended, I had a, a depth of feeling of grief about our little world, this tiny rock on which we just barely live on and how, uh, how uh, deadly everything is becoming. And I was in mourning for the death of our planet and how we have so little time to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, I've always wanted to ask you about the Twilight Zone because I think it gets lost sometimes in the conversation because of Star Trek and everything else you've done, but the, you were in two of the best most famous episodes of, of The Twilight Zone when you were a young man. Do, what is your recollection of, of making those episodes? And uh, do you ever watch The Twilight Zone Marathon on New Year's Eve? Uh, they always play those two that I'm in. Um, I never understood, uh, I, I find it difficult to understand why it's had such longevity, except that all these things that have a length of time, so many shows come and go, and oh, it was not a great show, yeah, what's the next show? But some shows, like Star Trek and these, and these uh, other half hours, um, seem to touch on some humanity that is an eternal. And like one of them, one of those half hours, Twilight Zones, was about what do I, how do I choose my fate? And the other one was, how does this airplane stay? Why is it, how is it flying? Right, yeah. And then there was a little Czechoslovakian acrobat on the, wing of the plane <laughs> at 700 miles an hour. <laughs> That's how it flies. Okay, got right, it. <laughs> right. Well, Mr. Shatner, thank you so much for joining us. It's always an honor to talk to Pleasure. you. Uh, to everyone at home, live long and prosper, partially for your own good, but also because there's more Comic-Con on the way. Thank you so much for talking.